What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite home girl, Gossip Girl. And today, I'm here to talk about Sean Grayson because I have some updates, all right? Well, first, let's get into this letter that his grandma-to-be wrote, okay? She's a letter to the editor. Does anyone care about Sean Grayson's family or what horrifying reality they are dealing with? And I will tell you right now, no. Nobody cares about that because Sonia Massey family is dealing with um, a lot right now. So she said, first to the protesters, what are you protesting? Sean is in jail. Charters are filed. Trial date to be set and punishment to be applied. Sean is not going anywhere. So please knock off wearing out your sweat glands. So please take your signs and go home and just be humans. Not the amusement or disgust to the public. Well, first of all, they're not be the protesters are not being disgusted to the public disgusting to the public. They are protesting because something that happened shouldn't have happened happened. You know what I'm saying? I know it sounds a little bit weird, but they are protesting for Sonia Massey. Do you understand that? Okay, you don't have the right to tell somebody to take these signs and go home. No, you sit down and stop writing letters being in support of Sean Gracie. How about that? But anyway, point number two, does anyone care about Sean's family or what ha or what horrifying reality they are dealing with? What about his fiance? He was to marry in October. She is an innocent young woman who also is unfairly being persecuted. Does anyone care about the destruction of her life? She is left to deal with an emotional death. And so, and so is um, Sonya Massey's family. They are dealing with an emotional death that shouldn't have happened. Sean's future in-law families, a to-be father-in-law who was as close to Sean as a father can be, a future mother-in-law, sister-in-law, brother-in-law, who is Sean's, um, Sean's friend. Future grandparents who loved Sean dearly and still do. Shock, disbelief, and reality, but an undying support for Sean. Well, you keep supporting Sean. How about that? Keep supporting him because we know you will. The past cannot be relived. The future is unknown. We only have each day to pray without ceasing. The Sean everyone desires to hate and persecute is not the Sean we have all known and love. We will always support Sean. I'm not surprised. Judge not, let's, lay, let's yet be judged. No man or woman is without sin. There is a final judgment for all. Proud grandmother-to-be of Sean Grayson. Brenda Butterfield. So, you guys, let me know in the comment section how do you feel about this letter? <sighs> All she did was just write her support of Sean and trying to say that the protesters should just take their signs and go home. Well, keep protesting. That's how I feel about it. Now, let's talk about Sean Grayson's behavior in Logan County, okay? I don't know how this man kept a job, but he had some horrible behavior issues while working for the police department. It's just ridiculous. And I think every police department he worked for should be investigated. I really do. But anyway, Sean Grayson had a rocky one-year tenure with Logan County Sheriff's Department. Personnel records show that Sean Grayson's time there was fraught, though he was not fired by the department. Grayson's file from Logan County shows he continued a high-speed pursuit of a traffic offender even after his supervisor ordered him to terminate it. A woman filed a complaint claiming that Sean Grayson tried to watch as she was strip searched. And her fiance, who was in Logan County Jail, claimed that Sean Grayson questioned him in front of other inmates as retaliation for his girlfriend complaints. 
So he just abusing his power all around. Logan County Chief Deputy Nathan Miller wrote in in, in November 2002 report that Grayson needed extensive training after failing to listen to his superiors. He wrote Grayson needed field training along with additional traffic stop training, report writing training, because he doesn't know how to write a report, high stress decision making process classes, and needs to read, discuss, and understand issue Logan County Sheriff's Department policies. Seven months on, how are you still employed by us? Nathan Miller asked Grayson during a recorded meeting to discuss Grayson's actions and Grayson responded, I don't know. Now with all of that, you would think he, they would fire him. No, they still kept him on. Now Grayson continued to serve with Logan County Sheriff's Department for five more months. Nathan Miller told Sean Grayson that these were violations that could lead to his firing. Grayson was still in his probationary period and could be fired at will. The records don't reflect Grayson was disciplined for the incident, but more training was recommended. So he wasn't disciplined. He kept doing what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it and abusing his power. And now this is why we are here where we at with the Sonia Massey case because nobody stopped him. Nobody fired him. If they would have fired him, I believe and I know that Sonia Massey would have still been alive if they would have took care of this a long time ago. The open internal investigations were closed when Grayson resigned in April of 2023 having not faced any discipline. He started his new job at Sagamon County Sheriff's Department in May of 2023. Now, Nathan Miller did not return a call seeking comment. Well, I don't think you're going to get it, so it is what it is. Nathan Miller wrote the report nearly two years before Grayson, you know, um, unalived Massey in the kitchen of her home after she called 911 to report a prowler in the early morning hours of July 6th. So we know what happened there, and I'm not going to relive that moment. We are talking about his behavior at the police department. Mm -mm -mm. Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board Records show that he worked for six law enforcement agencies around central Illinois in four years. He also had, you know, two convictions of driving while under the influence. A two-year revocation of his driving privileges and a general, general discharge from the military. Now, Grayson had been at Logan County Sheriff's Department for just over four months in 2022 when he continued a pursuit after his superiors ordered him to terminate. He was on probation and working the midnight shift when he attempted to stop a truck that failed to signal a turn, but the driver kept going. Now, Sean Miller noted that Grayson pursued the truck through Lincoln at high speeds and without due caution, going through intersections. Miller noted that Grayson's squad car was traveling faster than 60 miles per hour in 30 mile per hour zones. In squad car video obtained by the news outlet, Grayson's supervisor on duty asks if he is chasing the truck on a traffic violation, and Grayson says he is. The supervisor tells Grayson to terminate the pursuit. Now, instead of slowing down, Grayson turned off his emergency lights and sirens and continued at speeds more than 100 miles per hour to keep the truck in sight, he wrote in his report. The pursuit ended when a deer collided with Grayson's vehicle rendering it inoperable. 
Mm. Now, during a recorded meeting to grace to discuss Grayson's um, deficiencies in November of 2023, Miller met with Grayson and tried to impress him on him the importance of you know following a chain of command, writing accurate reports, and wearing a uniform while on duty. So, wait a minute. So, he's walking around not wearing a uniform on duty? <sighs> wow. At one point, Miller pointed out discrepancies to Grayson's report of the high-speed chase. He asked if Grayson was lying because he could not see what he, you know, um, purported to see in the report. Now, Miller said, it's official misconduct, but nobody fired him. Now, at the time, Grayson was on light duty. He was battling colon cancer and undergoing chemotherapy. Huh? Okay. A month, a month after the meeting between Grayson and Miller, the sheriff's department received a complaint that Grayson tried to watch as a female detainee was strip searched. Let me run it back for you. Grayson and Miller, they had a meeting, right? The sheriff's department received a complaint that Grayson tried to watch as a female detainee was strip searched. When contraband was discovered, the woman was sent to a local hospital to have it removed. Hmm. In a written complaint, she contended he opened the curtain while she was having a pelvic exam to remove the drugs. Why would he open the curtain to look at some? You know what? That's another reason why he should have been fired. Okay, so the report was unfounded, but his supervisors recommended that Grayson receive counseling on best practices. Two weeks later, the woman's fiance, who was being held in Logan County Jail, filed a complaint stating that Grayson came to the jail and questioned him in retaliation. He is angry at her for filing the report and came back here and asked to speak to me in front of all the other inmates who now know that I talked to detectives which could possibly put me in danger, the man wrote. Grayson denied any wrongdoing, but the department launched an internal investigation. In March of 2023, Grayson pulled up to dispute, pulled up to a dispute at his mother's house in Gerard. The police were there and Grayson pulled his badge, according to the Gerard police report. The disagreement involved a custody dispute over Grayson's nephews, and that was stated in the report. Sean Grayson became angry and began yelling at the Gerard police officer who handled the call, then called the police chief and the mayor, according to Gerard police reports. In response to an Illinois Freedom of Information Act request, the Logan County Department also released Grayson's hiring packet, discipline, and other personnel, personnel records. These records included his application, interview notes, reference checks, and screenshots of his, his and his girlfriend's social media accounts. Grayson's personnel records included a detailed background check, which revealed potential red flags. Oh, yeah. Wow. The police chief in the city of Auburn his pre previous employer relayed to Logan County that Grayson was very aggressive about making drug arrests and expressed concern that he was too aggressive. The chief further said Grayson was a bragger 
once, you know, he had posted stuff about a drug arrest on social media. He bragged about it. The Auburn chief also noted that Grayson struggled with reporting writing, with report writing, and that it was not great with evidence. Though the chief relayed that Grayson received no write-ups or punishment during his time at Auburn. Now, during his interview with Logan County on March 25, 2022, Grayson answered 195 questions posed by a Logan County Sheriff's investigator. Grayson told him, according to the interview notes and his application, that he received an honorable discharge from the Army. But Capital News Illinois obtained the discharge paperwork he submitted to the Pawnee Police Department in 2020, which showed he was given a general discharge from Fort Riley, Kansas in 2016, although the exact circumstances of the discharge were not clear. Now, during his interview with Logan County, Grayson said he had applied for police departments in Champaign and Takeda, as well as the Champaign County Sheriff's Department, but he said he turned them down. Grayson said he made it through the background check according to interview notes. He also said that he applied to Springfield Police Department in 2019, but didn't go through, but the process didn't go through. Now, Massey's family and their attorney, Ben Crump, have said the family was not told that Massey was, you know, unalive by an officer. They learned all that stuff through the news reports, the emergency calls, you know, placed to the Sagamon County Central Dispatch System obtained by News Illinois show confusion in the minutes after the shooting. We don't have any information and nobody will tell us anything, which is really fun. The dispatcher tells a supervisor during one of the calls. In the minutes after the shooting, a county dispatcher tells an Illinois State Police dispatcher they are now saying it's self-inflicted. So all this stuff, is it's just, it's just a whole red flag. You know, Sagamon County is a red flag. Sean Grayson is a huge red flag because there's no way in the world he should have been hired from, you know, at all. After all that stuff he has done, he was still able to work at a different um, police department in a different county. And then when all the stuff happened, they was holding back information from the family. Hmm. Hmm. But anyway, that's all I have on that. If I find out anything else, you guys know that I will let you know because I am on this case. And I'm going to keep talking about it. I'm, I'm going to keep talking about it. But I see none of this stuff when it came up, if this thing didn't happen with Sonya Massey, he would have still been on the police force. He would have still been out there doing what he wants to do and when he wants to do it. Just being a huge red flag. But this happened. So now everything is getting exposed. Here's the thing. He should have been fired a long time ago. And that's how I feel about it. And I'll talk to you guys later.